Hello friends, in the series which we are doing on understanding popular culture, in one of the earlier lectures we talked about how Indian cinema uh, in which uh, how we had to ma uh, it in a way connected to uh, the national movement or the India's struggle for independence. And in this uh, next lecture also we will talk about how Indian cinema, how it mapped the influence of the national struggle for independence. And uh, in the initial uh, lecture we talked about uh, the mythological cinema of those times during the silent period that how the mythological films they were being made. We also talked about many of the devotional films which were made during that point of time. And we talked about some of the historical films like Pokar and Sikandar which were uh, made in 1930s and early 1940s. And how these films they were in a way connected to the national uh, struggle of uh, India and how the ideals and the aspirations of the people they got reflected in the films as well. And uh, for, the, for in, in that context you can see the various readings, Gautam Kaul Cinema and the Indian Freedom Struggle, Aruna Vasudev's Liberty and License in Indian Cinema, S.T. Bhaskaran, The Message Bearers, The Nationalist Politics and the Entertainment Media in South India 1880 to 1945, Feroz Rangunwala, 75 years of Indian Cinema. So these are some of the readings which one can refer when one is uh, talking about uh, the Indian Cinema. And uh, as I told you that when we tend to place or situate the uh, Indian cinema, then we also have to see that how uh, the international developments or the Indian developments which were happening in India, uh, the, these kinds of developments which were political in nature, uh, they also influenced uh, the films as well. And in that context, the socialist revolution of 1917 or the communist movement which was happening in India and the various labor and peasant movements of those times and how the progressive cultural movements they helped in the rejection of the religious orthodoxy and the establishment of the new values and ideas in the socio-political sphere. And we also find that there was some kind of a protest against the religious fanaticism, caste-based divisions and violence against women. They were all of them, they were a result of these influences in the cultural sphere. So, when we tend to understand these international developments, we have to situate them in the Indian context. And we also have to see that how the, how the films, they were being seen by the various national leaders as well. For example, Gandhi uh, who made the issue of untouchability, women's emancipation and the Hindu Muslim unity as a central to the national movement. And Gandhi himself considered cinema as some sort of a vice or uh, some uh, he had that kind of an aversion to the films and uh, he did not see films in his entire lifetime and it is being reported that he saw only one film in his lifetime that was Ram Raj, which was made by Vijay Bhatt in 1943. And K. Abbas wrote an open letter to Mahatma Gandhi uh, asking him to consider cinema uh, not as a wise, uh, but rather treated, uh, treated as in a more sympathetic manner. And how the film industry people, uh, they could get the blessings of Gandhi, uh, this is what he wrote in an open letter. And apart from Gandhi, we also see that other leaders, those who were uh, attached with the national movement, uh, for example, uh, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, he supported the cinema. And uh, he, the Falke Sodeshi cinema was also uh, supported by Tilak and in his uh, general uh, Kesari, he wrote positive reviews about the film about the films which were made by Falke. And uh, Gautam Kaul has reported that he even wanted to start a film company uh, in collaboration with Dada Sahab Falke. Uh, we also find that some other leaders like uh, Lala Rajpat Rai was also supportive of cinema. And he questioned the intentions of uh, the government uh, when he was there in the legislative assembly. And uh, one of the leaders, Satyamurti, he used cinema for the party propaganda purposes in South India. Uh, we also see that some other leaders like Sarojini Naidu was also supportive uh, of cinema. And uh, another women leader, Rameshwari Nehru. Uh, 
she was critical of the British censorship, the way British censorship was being imposed in India. We find that the issues of the sex and violence, they were not given importance, importance uh, by the British. And uh, uh, they were more concerned with the ideas of uh, uh, the ideas which were connected to the ideas of freedom, uh, ideas which were comparatively more revolutionary uh, in nature. So, we basically find that uh, these uh, political leaders, uh, they were well versed with what was happening in the field of cinema and uh, many of them they tried to support uh, the filmmakers. But when we tend to understand uh, the situation in a in a holistic manner, then we find that at the level at the level of the party or at the collective level, the the filmmakers did not get all that kind of a support which was necessary for them during the colonial period. And uh, uh, we also find that apart from the mythological films which we have talked about, we have also talked about the, the historical cinema. Uh, and the historical films and how these mythologicals and devotionals they were being in a way understood in those uh, particular times and uh, at the same time uh, uh, the historical uh, films how uh, they sometimes uh, they, they were they had a lot of fictionalized accounts as well uh, but we also have to realize uh, at the same time that uh, at that point of time India was under the colonial rule and uh, uh, and the Indian filmmakers, uh, they, they were not ready to put their money uh, in films where they could not realize uh, that money. And some of the filmmakers, they, they realized the importance of these kinds of portrayals and uh, in an allegorical manner, uh, they tried to use or utilize the ideals of the national movement. Uh, by taking them uh, to the masses. And when we tend to see the action films of those times, J. B. H. Wadia and Humi Wadia, uh, they were the two important filmmakers and uh, important film personality in, in the action films of those times was Nadia. And uh, the title of the stunt films were provocative and patriotic uh, in nature. Uh, they had that kind of a fervor. Uh, films like Azadi, Hind Kesari, Desh Deepak, uh, they were being made by the stunt filmmakers. And we see that the banners, they also mocked the authorities uh, by naming themselves as National Movie Tone, Hindamata Films and Indian Liberty. So, uh, not only the banners, the names of the banners, but at the same time the title of the films, uh, they were also provocatic and provocative and they also carried uh, the patriotic fervor. And uh, uh, when we t tend to understand the stunt films or the action films of those times, that uh, uh, the kind of overtones which these stunt films had, then we find that they had deeper nationalist overtones, they were uh, patriotic in nature and they advocated democracy. And uh, uh, during the climax scenes, when we see the verbal uh, confrontation between the protagonist and the antagonist, the ideas of the rights of democracy, good governance, justice and freedom of speech and expression, they were being advocated at that point of time. And in the end, the victory of good over evil and the legitimate over illegitimate, it sharpened the people's desire for freedom. So, we find that when you uh, try to locate the stunt films of those times, then we realize that these stunt films, they were also uh, trying to communicate uh, those kinds of ideas which were uh, associated uh, with uh, the rights of the people in, in, in a manner that they are able to get a good governance for themselves and how people they wanted freedom and justice uh, for themselves. And uh, the ideals of uh, the question of legitimacy of uh, the colonial rule, uh, they were also being talked about in this in these films and they they raised these kinds of concerns among the masses that how colonial rule was an illegitimate rule and how it had to be erad eradicated from India and uh, uh, filmmakers uh, like K. Bas they observed that in this particular atmosphere of growing anti imperialism even the coerced stunt films they were being used to portray and glorify 
the democratic aspirations of the masses. And if the British censors they were satisfied at the climax by installation of a legitimate heir on throne, the audience could not forget the earlier sequences which dramatized the general public defiance of a tyrant's authority. So, uh, even in uh, the stunt films which were considered to be uh, uh, the action films of uh, uh, today's times, even these films they were trying to uh, narrate uh, the story in such a fashion that the ideals of uh, the anti-imperialism uh, they, they, they could be made known to uh, the masses and even uh, the filmmakers those who were associated with these films they uh, when they talked uh, in the later stages of their lives they, they realized or they in a way uh, accepted the fact that these kinds of ideals they were uh, they were put in these films in a very deliberate manner uh, so that uh, so that people they could uh, get acquainted with these kind of ideas uh, which were associated uh, with the national movement and uh, filmmakers like J.B.H. Uh, Wadia uh, his films the, they were deliberate this is what he argues and they were well thought out uh, 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 in a way exercise in terms of uh, promoting and propagating the ideas of uh, democracy and freedom and we also find that other themes which they were also being taken in these films the ideals of the ideas which were associated with untouchability uh, the idea of literacy campaign and the dignity of labor they, they could also be seen and they make some kind of a plea for democracy anti fascism and the emancipation of indian women so all these kinds of ideas they they could be seen in films uh, in which uh, in many of these films we find that Nadia was the main protagonist and uh, uh, even a popular film called uh, Nadia Hunterwali uh, which became very popular in those times or Diamond Queen uh, for that matter. There were so many films in which uh, Nadia acted and uh, uh, these films they were uh, taking, uh, uh, the, uh, they, taking the national movement uh, to a different level where they were pleading, making plea for the ideals of democracy or any kind of fascism which was being uh, shown by uh, the British or the colonial government. And they were also talking about the emancipation of the Indian women that how women they have to emancipate themselves from uh, the current situation. Uh, we also see that there were other films uh, which were talking about the other issues like the caste system or the mismatched marriages or the ideals of the Hindu Muslim unity. And we see that there was a film called Wrath which was made in 1931 which was dealing with the uh, issue of poverty, untouchability and social inequality. And it had a character called Garib Das which was drawn in exact image of Mahatma Gandhi. And how the British censors they heavily cut the scenes and got it renamed as Khuda Ki Shan or glory of God. So, how the colonial censors they were operating in those times and many uh, many of the uh, scenes or many of uh, the themes uh, which were no, uh, not uh, which did not suit uh, the colonial government in terms of their uh, policies or in terms of their ideas uh, they were in a way uh, removed and uh, how uh, the a lot of powers they were being given to the British officials and how these uh, British officials they exercised their powers in terms of uh, deleting the scenes, uh, deleting the dialogues or many a times uh, even uh, renaming the films and deleting the scenes on a very large uh, uh, basis. And uh, we also find that uh, some uh, other films uh, which were dealing with the ideals of caste or untouchability they were being made in one of the popular films of those times was Achut Kanya which was made in 1936. And how this film showed a contemporary awareness of uh, the untouchability and the intercaste barriers of those times. And how Gandhi described the colonial rule as a scourge and untouchability a plague. So, we find that these kinds of films, uh, for example, Achut Kanya, uh, in which Ashok Kumar and Devikarani Devi acted, and in a, in a, in a light hearted manner, the film. Uh, uh, communicates the idea of untouchability or the intercaste barriers which are there in the society. 
and uh, how these kinds of barriers they, they could be removed uh, from the society through uh, the collective efforts of the people those who are uh, involved. Uh, another film uh, uh, which was very important uh, which was made by Vishantaram was Dunya Naman in 1937 which was dealing with the idea of mismatched marriages in the society and in this film uh, the female protagonist Shanta Apte uh, she exhibits the revolutionary reform spirit uh, of a woman where she refuses to consummate uh, her marriage uh, because she was tricked into the marriage uh, where an old man was married to a very young girl. So, this kind of a mismatched marriages, they were quite common in, in the society of those times. And we Shantaram did not have any uh, kind of a solution to this kind of a problem uh, where, uh, where uh, an old man who had uh, married a very young uh, wife and uh, this wife is uh, uh, refusing to consummate the marriage and she says that uh, the man is old enough uh, to be her father. So, this uh, kind of a situation where the old man is really not able to come out of that situation and finally, he decides to commit suicide because he uh, does not have any, any kind of a solution to this kind of a problem. As divorce rates, they were not all that high in those times, they were very rare, they were not even being talked about. And, uh, so, uh, uh, many a times uh, uh, when I have seen this film, I realized that uh, this film was way ahead of its times and uh, the kind of idea which it depicted in 1937 and the kind of picturization which was being done uh, in those times uh, and how the women they have to in a way realize that their emancipation lies in their own hands and they have to make every kind of an effort to overcome the kind of problems in which they find themselves. And uh, how Shanta Apte finds that that she has uh, she has this kind of a right where she has to refuse uh, to consummate the marriage, and this uh, she does in the entire film. And uh, finally, uh, finally, uh, some of the critics they have argued that why she is applying kumkum when she considers uh, herself that she she does not want to marry an old man, and why she is engaging herself. Uh, in, in the kind of rituals which are associated with a married woman. Uh, but we also have to realize that we have to situate this film in 1937 and uh, at the same time the kind of uh, problems with which women uh, they could find themselves in those times, uh, they were very well reflected in this film. Uh, apart from that, we also find that there was a film called Brandy Key Bottle. Uh, which was uh, talking about the demonstrations against the liquor and the slogans which were emphasizing the independence and the references to Gandhi and Patel they were reflective of the mood of combat among um, the people and in this film we find the patriotic fervor in the various kinds of slogans which are there in the film where it is said that sharab chhodna azadi ki pehli manzil hai giving up liquor is the first step in the attainment of independence and Gandhi is referred to as the Azadi Ka Devta, Angel of Freedom in this film. So, we find that uh, uh, films like uh, Brandy Ki Bottle though they were in a way talking about uh, the issue of prohibition, but at the same time they were also uh, trying to show the importance of the political leaders and how these political leaders uh, they were in a way contributing in terms of some kind of a reform in the society uh, when they were in a way supporting the cause of prohibition where uh, we find that the poor poor men how they uh, were spending their money in terms in terms of liquor and that money should have been uh, spent on on their children or on their family so all these kinds of issues they were being talked about in those times and then Vishantaram also made two films, Padosi and Admi, and uh, we find that this idea of Hindu Muslim unity was shown in Padosi, that how British, the way British they created divisions in the two communities of India. Similarly, we find that uh, the film was also talking about this kind of an idea. Then there was a film called Admi, which was in reaction to the Devadas, which was made in 1935. And he also made a film called Dr. Kotniski Amarkani, which was based on the medical mission 
uh, which was sent from India uh, to China. So, uh, we find that Devdas uh, was a pessimistic kind of a film where Devdas was being shown to be a weak character and how he uh, was not able to marry a woman of her own choice because he could not take a stand against uh, the kind of will of the parents who were not ready to marry him uh, to, uh, to a woman who did not belong to their strata of society. So, the issue of class or uh, the issue of uh, uh, the status was very, very important in Devadas. And finally, uh, Devadas, uh, uh, because of his uh, 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 weak will, uh, finally dies in the end. So, this uh, kind of a pessimism which was there in uh, Devadas, uh, which was made by P.C. Barua, uh, both in Bengali as well as in Hindi, in which the Bengali version P.C. Barua himself played the role of Devdas and in the Hindi version K. L. Segal played the role of Devdas. So, uh, V. Shantaram uh, uh, brought out another film called Admi, which was in reaction to this. And Admi is talking about the positive aspects in the society and how uh, one, uh, one person has to come out of that kind of a situation in which one person has entered due to some kind of circumstances. It is being in a way reflected in Admi. On the other hand, uh, Padosi is some kind of a take on, on the communal harmony that how uh, communal harmony has to be maintained in the uh, Indian society and how third parties, uh, they, they all, always want to take some kind of a uh, benefit out of the situation and British, they were the third party, how the policy of the divide and rule which was being uh, followed by the British in India, which was the hallmark of their hegemony in India. So, that could be seen. And uh, any kind of a any kind of a division within the society uh, will be in a way uh, beneficial uh, to the British in every manner. So these kinds of ideas uh, they they were being talked about in the kind of films which were uh, made at this uh, point of time. And we also see that during this period uh, a number of films they were being uh, censored by the colonial censors because they felt that they were trying to uh, they were trying to show uh, those kinds of ideas which were uh, in a, which were not conducive uh, to the colonial rule uh, we also see that some of the organizations at this point of time for example uh, 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 the progressive writers association which was established in 1936 under the presidentship of munshi premchand where uh, uh, and the young and aspiring writers and poets, they came under, uh, the, un, under the umbrella of the Progressive Writers Association. And uh, when we tend to understand it, it was a major cultural initiative to introduce the political awareness and social realism. And we find that in June 1935 in Paris was held the Conference of the World Writers. And from thereafter, uh, this kind of an idea also came to India and the Progressive Writers Association was formed in India in 1936. And uh, some of uh, the people, those who were associated with this organization, they also ventured into the film medium as well. Even Munshi Premchand, uh, he wrote a story uh, called Mill or Mazdoor on which the film was made. Uh, though Munshi Premchand did not like his entry into the film medium and he was not satisfied the way the film was made and thereafter how uh, this film which was talking about the some kind of a conflict between the mill owners and the people those who were working in the mill or, or the factory. So, this kind of a uh, this kind of a class conflict which was uh, being shown in the film was also not suitable for the colonial censors because uh, uh, they, they were also apprehens apprehensive of such kind of themes uh, which were being depicted in cinema. We also see that uh, uh, in mid 1930s as Sajjad Zaheer and Mulk Raj Anand who were the two founder members of the Progressive Writers of India, they called their first meeting of association in November 1935 in London. And it resulted in the establishment of the International Association of Writers for the defense of culture against fascism. So, all these kinds of development, they were happening at the international level and how when we tend to understand PWA 
then it was part of an international movement which was focusing on the local popular culture uh, which had some kind of a clear social and political objectives and uh, it also states that writer was first a uh, socially and politically responsible member of society and how he had to participate in these kinds of activities as well apart from that we also see another organization indian people's theaters organization uh, which was uh, established in bombay in 1943 and uh, the draft resolution of all india people's theaters conference was drawn up in may 1943 and it was geared towards anti fascism and anti imperialism so how ipta was also in a way associated uh, or it also wanted to bring the theater out of the auditorium uh, to the open skies and the nukkar nataks or the street theaters uh, they were being performed uh, because of ipta and it was also part of the it was the cultural wing of the communist party or of india cpi and filmmakers like k abbas uh, shambhu mitra balraj sahani all of them they were in a way associated uh, with ipta and uh, we see that uh, they, they in a way were also influenced by some of the films which were made in italy in those times which are known as the uh, neo realist films and uh, so when we tend to understand the cinema of those times when we tend to understand the various kinds of genres uh, which were uh, beginning from mythologicals and devotionals then historicals then stunt cinema all these films they were trying to in a way connect uh, with the uh, connect with the national movement in some way and uh, uh, their portrayals they were also reflective of the ideals of uh, the national movement and uh, so much so that that there was a very popular kind of film called uh, kismat which was made in 1943 and in kismat uh, we hear a song called aaj male ki choti se fir humne lalkara hai dur hato hai duniya walon hindustan hamara hai so even the popular films they uh, carried uh, such kind of uh, lyrics in their songs and poet pradeep he wrote this particular song and british authorities they got apprehensive of uh, this kind of lyrics and when uh, they were being inquired uh, one of the inspectors uh, he was sent to the cinema hall and he suggested that uh, the lyric says tum na kisi ke aage jhukna german ho ya japani so he says that the references to the germans and the japanese and not to the british so Uh, we find that how cinema has in a way uh, tried to show the ideals of the national movement uh, in whatever way uh, uh, they could do in the colonial period uh, we'll talk about uh, all these as- all these aspects and uh, the other kinds of cinemas in our next lecture uh, thank you very much